Alright, well good evening and welcome to Catopia. I hope that your Wednesday night is off to a fantastic start. Uh, so far, my Wednesday has been pretty good. I've been fairly busy. I've completed, um, well, spring cleaning my kitchen. Uh, so removing everything from every cabinet, uh, wiping down every surface, putting everything back in, uh, pledging the cupboards, all of those little details uh, that come into spring cleaning. I just remembered I forgot to clean the light fixture. So I'm almost done with the kitchen. <laughs> Still need to clean the light fixture. Um, yes, there we go on Facebook. Finally got it to connect. Um, so anyway, that's kind of what I've been doing. Uh, well, with my time, I've been focusing on trying to uh, get my house in tip-top shape. That's what I do every June slash July um, is doing all that spring cleaning. Uh, so as you can tell, I have myself... Um, <laughs> I have myself set up a little bit differently tonight. You can see Bob uh, back behind me, which is awesome. Uh, you can also see that I did, in fact, clear off all of the walls. Uh, and I'm restarting the wall. So those are some uh, paintings that I've done most recently. And so that is the scoop there. And just like last night, I have a text to answer. It's been a very big texting week. <laughs> Okie dokie. All right. So get that up to speed. Okay, so here's what we are up to tonight. Um, we are up to season 12, episode 2 with Bob Ross. And I am closing in on 200, not episodes, but 200 oil paintings. Um, so if I look real quickly, just to make sure. Um, tonight will be 194. So we are really, really closing it in. Um, all right. So let us find Bob. He, there he is. Okay. So I've got the liquid white ready to go. Tonight's title is Mountain Reflections. Um, so for some reason, this reminds me a lot of uh, a season two episode where I think it was actually Steve Ross who walked us through it. Um, yeah, like super, super similar. Uh, but we're going to see what Bob uh, takes us through here. Hi, welcome back. I'm glad you could join me today. You ready to do a fantastic little painting? Yes, I am. I'll tell you what, let's start out and yes, hammer on all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with me. And as usual, they'll okay, come across in the same order as I have on the palette, starting with the white and working all the way around. Let's go on up to the canvas here. I've got my standard old 18 by 24 canvas up here and it's all covered with liquid white and it's it's ready to go. So let's let's get started. Today I'm going to start out with a touch of phthalo blue. Just a touch. It's very strong. Very strong. And I'm going to reach up here and grab a touch of the midnight black and put in there. So now we have black and blue. Or blue and black. Just tap it into the bristles. Okay, let's go right up here. Let's just build a happy little sky. And I'm just going to make little X's, little crisscross strokes, and work all the way across the canvas. Just keep going all the way across. And you can add a little more color as you need it. Now, by starting at the top, working all the way across, and then working downward, your color will mix with the liquid white, and automatically, automatically, it'll get lighter and lighter toward the horizon. You don't have to do a thing. It'll work for you automatically. And in a landscape, you always want it to be lighter toward the horizon, darker on the top and bottom. That helps create that illusion of distance in your painting. Well, we can just blend it like so, like so. Okay. Then, very lightly, we just make some long horizontal strokes to take out all the all the brush marks. Now then. Tell you what, while we have this old dirty brush going, I'm going to go right back into my blue, back into the blue, and black, same old colors, and let's have some water in this painting. I love to paint water. Water is so fantastic, and it's one of the easiest things to do in this technique. So start from the outside and pull inward. Start at the bottom and work up. That way, automatically, once again, it gets lighter and lighter toward the horizon. 
see, by pulling from the outside in, you don't have any strong edges here that you have to blend out. It's very soft. Very soft, and it works much better. A little more of the color on the brush, and we'll do the other side. Pull from the outside in. And I want to leave a little area open here. If everything works just right, it'll look just like a little sheen of light coming across the water. Make your painting pretty when it's done. There. See, and that easy. That easy. You got you got your water in, and very lightly. Just grazing the canvas. Just bring it all together. And your light area still remains in there. And as we work farther and farther into the painting, you'll see why that light area is so so valuable. It becomes your good friend. All right, let's wash our brush. And we wash our brushes with odorless thinner. And I really, <laughs> I really recommend you use odorless thinner. You're going to be working by yourself. There's a screen in the bottom of the can that I scrub the brush against. It allows the solid materials to settle to the bottom. And we'll shake off the excess. And then I have no idea what my poor <laughs> Just beat the devil. That's the most fun part of this whole technique. But if you do that in your living room, you're going to get run right out of the yard. Let's build a handy little cloud today. Going to use, we we'll use a one inch brush. You can do it with a fan brush or a two inch. I'll just use one inch. Be right back. Get a touch of bright red, just a touch. Pull quite a bit of color into the brush. Okay, let's go up here. Maybe there lives up here in the sky a happy little cloud that floats around and just has fun all day. See? Keep the brush moving. Keep the brush moving. Tight little circular strokes. And you have to make big decisions here. Where does your cloud live? If he lives right there, then just drop him in. Okay, and maybe he's got a friend. There's his friend. He lives right there. Maybe this is a lady friend. There. See how easy that is? You can do it. You can do it. You know, I get so many letters and stuff from people that are... They never believed. They never believed that they could paint, and you wouldn't believe some of the some of the pictures they send me of the paintings. My gosh, it it really makes it all worthwhile. And young people, I have so many young friends. They are doing some of the most beautiful paintings you've ever seen. There we go. Well, we just I get to talking here, and I just put clouds all over the place. Now, with a clean, dry oh, brush, yeah. be sure your brush is dry. Good and, and good and dry. Good and dry. <laughs> um, yeah, I like that. I'd like to think that I'm making him proud by continuing to learn from him and um, paint some masterpieces along with him. I keep talking about how I need to do some TLC on my brushes. Still haven't. <laughs> that could be part of this room's uh, spring cleaning regimen is uh, cleaning my brushes. <laughs> okay, that was pretty bendy. Here we go. Oh, tongue got over my teeth there and I couldn't see what I was saying. <laughs> okay, now I'm just going to blend the, the base of these clouds out. The little tiny circles. Tiny little circles. There you go. See? Just blend the base out. Over here. Blend it out a little bit. And then very lightly lift it up. Lift it up. Fluff it. And then blend it. Isn't that a super nice, easy way to make a beautiful little cloud? When us traditional painter clouds used to give me a fit. Whew. Now they're one of the easiest things there is to do. Look at there. See? Very loose and fluffy. And you can make a happy little clown. And we'll wash your brush one more time. <laughs> I just I just like to beat on that brush. That's where you take out all your frustrations. Let's build a mountain in this one. I lived in Alaska for oh, over a dozen years and I'm crazy about mountains. We'll take some black, some Prussian blue. Put some Van Dyke Brown, shoot, we'll throw some lizard and crimson in there too. So we got them blue, black, brown, crimson. Looking for a good dark color. Cut us off a little roll of paint right on the edge of the knife, okay? Now then, 
decide where your mountain lives, and maybe in your world it lives right here. Push very firmly, and all you're, all you're worried about is the outside edge here. You can really care less what's going on inside this mountain. See? That's oh, all you're looking for. To put it. <laughs> and mountains are one of the most fun and educational things. I'm going to have to back that up. Sorry, Bob. A little roll of paint right on the edge of the knife. Okay. Little roll. Now then, decide where your mountain lives, and maybe in your world it lives right here. Push very firmly, and all you're, all you're worried about is the outside edge here. You can really care less what's going on inside this mountain. See? That's all you're looking for. And mountains are one of the most fun and educational things to paint. Because it'll teach you how to how to make friends with this old knife. And this knife can do some of the most fantastic things imaginable. But it's like everything else, you have to make friends with it. So devote a little time to practice. Scrape off all the excess paint. Just really get in there. You can probably hear how hard I'm scraping. Just really get in there and, and scrape it out. You're not going to hurt the canvas. You're not going to hurt it. It's tough. It's really tough. Now we take the large brush and I want to pull that color. Because this canvas is wet, you can move the color. And we blend it out. If you can see the entire mountain, it's always more distinct at the top than it is at the bottom of mist and, and pollution and all those things that, that break up and diffuse light. So by allowing it to just blend out on the base like this, that happens automatically. See, that mountain looks like it's just floating out there in the sky. Floating mountain. Floating mountain. Hmm. Okay, let's, let's put some snow on the mountain. Now when you're doing this at home, maybe, maybe you don't want to have snow on it. Maybe you want to have rocks and stuff. Change the color. The white shows up much better for television. So I'm going to use white today. I'm going to put a touch of the, just a touch of the bright red in there. And I say touch because very quickly, very quickly you can set your oh, white on that. fire. Okay, cut across. And one. Sometimes I just like to stop and appreciate. What I've got going on there. Clean off the old knife. Oh, oh dear. Uh, I think someone forgot to clean the knife the last time. I mean, that would have been me. <laughs> All right. Let's see, other things that I did today include I brewed my own beer and it's fermenting as well. So I've got mead, which takes one to two months plus, so potentially eight months to a year. <laughs> uh, and then the beer brews uh, in two weeks, you bottle it, and then you let it carbonate for another two weeks. So it'll at least be done in one month, exactly. So that's useful. Once again, we need that little roll of paint right on the edge of the knife, okay? Now then, take the point of the knife, put it right up here on the point of your mountain. No pressure, no pressure, no pressure. Just let it float. Just let it float. And you want the paint to break. And by break, it means have all these holes left in it. And you need a firm paint to do this. If you're using a paint that's thin or oily, you're going to probably become a mud mixer. And you're probably going to be upset with me. So be sure your paint is good and firm. It should be very dry. And then it'll do this. Okay. No pressure, though. Absolutely no pressure. When I was teaching my son Steve to paint, I used to tell him just to pretend he was a whisper floating across the mountain. A little bit right there. Now then, I'm going to take some white. Let's use a little touch of the Prussian blue. White and a little touch of Prussian blue. Doesn't take much of that Prussian blue. Boy, it's strong. Boy, it is strong. One tube in the ocean would change the color. Okay. Prussian blue. Is that really what we out very flat. Once again, cut across and get our little roll of paint. We need that. Now then, notice here that all the angles are going basically in the same direction, all the highlight angles. Now then, when we start putting the shadows on, they'll go in the opposing or opposite angle. See? And that makes, that makes those highlights just pop out. Now, if you want this little peak to be in the background, put that shadow in first. 
then when you come here, bring this one distinctly through, and that easy, <laughs> that easy, you pushed a mountain back. Told you you had a lot of power here. I'll put a little touch right in there. This peak right there needs its own little shadow. There we go. And let that paint break. It's a very delicate touch. Very delicate touch. And you can sort of work it back and forth. Redefining firm edges. Maybe that comes upon out. Right on around. When you're practicing, get an old canvas or something and just paint mountain after mountain. It'll teach you control, teach you how to, to make some of these fantastic effects. Okay. Good, clean, dry brush. I want to again create the illusion of mist down here. So very gently, following the angles of the mountain, always following those angles. Just tap. Be sure your brush is clean and dry. Then lightly, there's two hairs and some air. Lift upward. <laughs> Two hairs in this mirror. Boy, that is light. barely grazing the canvas. Over here, follow these angles. And same thing, lift upward. But just on the base. Let me show you a little trick. Maybe, oh, wow. maybe you want to show another range of mountains right in the front here. <laughs> okay? Watch here. Watch here, watch here. Let's start off and put a little highlight on there. See there? There it goes. Maybe, who knows, maybe in your world, maybe there's a bump. This right there. All you have to do, make a decision and drop it in. Because you can do anything on this canvas. Anything that you want to do. That easy. But now we need a shadow. Watch right here. See, this makes no sense until you slip back in here and put a happy little shadow right in there. See, then bloop, just jumps right up there. All right, here we go. Just like that. Every highlight needs its own shadow, or it won't come out and play with you. All right, and a couple here and there. Okay, now then, clean, dry brush, and we'll put some mist at the base of this little mountain. But see how you can put another mountain right in front of that one? That easy. That easy. I told you you had power. You can do anything. All right. My uh, mountain got a little low. <laughs> that happens to me a lot. I barely have maybe a third of my sheet to uh, put whatever else we're putting in this picture. <laughs> Any old thing. Usually gets his mountain in the top. Okay. okay, let's have some fun. We'll just keep that same old mountain color we got here. That was black, Prussian blue, some Van Dyke brown, some crimson, and I'll add a little touch of sap green to it. Just a little bit of sap green. So we have a very dark color. Okay. Clean off my knife. Let me reach over here. Today, let's, let's use a one-inch brush. I'm going to go right into that color. Just, just mm -hmm. tap a little color in there. Let's go right right down to the base of this mountain. And maybe down in here, there's some little trees and bushes that live right down in here. Just push, bend the brush upward, push it. That makes all those little things just happen that easy. There they go. There's another one. Wherever you want them to be. used to drive me crazy when I was traditional painting was reflections. Watch how easy. Just grab that and pull it down. 
because the canvas is wet, the paint will move and reflections can be made that easy. Pull straight down and then go lightly across, just enough to distort it a little. That easy. Instant reflections. There we go. Wanted to see that nice uh, wide shot. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> Instant reflections. Now let's put some highlights on there. I'll dip a one inch brush into a touch of the, just a touch of the liquid white. We'll go through some yellow. Reach up here and grab some sap green. Okay. A lot of paint. Let's go ahead and here. Now then, let's just come right in here and we'll throw some beautiful little highlights on these and we'll sort of vary the colors in. I'll hit a little ochre, a little Indian yellow here and there. Maybe even a little touch of bright red. See, now while you have this on the brush, we can reflect some of it right down into the water. Shoot, we're having so much fun with reflections here. Why not keep them going? It's another little bush. Let him reflect right into the water. Right into the water. Maybe this one right here. Mm. Oh, that's a pretty one. Reflect him down into the water. Another one right there. Where have you been? That was my big brush. That was not my regular one inch brush. Okay. I think they should live. See, now you can go in and push the brush upward. Just see there? Isn't that super? Just make all kinds of happy little things. A little bit right down in there. Now then. Back to the two inch brush and two hairs and some air again, very lightly. Just caress it. Make love to it. Straight down, straight down. And very lightly go across. Very lightly. Okay, so so far this episode Super we've weighty. had lady friend cloud then let's go back and hear that one more time and two hairs and some air again very lightly just caress it make love to it straight down straight down i don't know why i found that so lightly. funny go across but uh very lightly i let bob caress me let's let's be honest here Here we go. <laughs> Make those mirror reflections, and it's easy. It's easy. I'm going to take a touch of the uh, liquid white to that. I'll add a little bit of, a little bit of brown. A little bit of the dark again. sienna. Put it out else. very flat, and then cut across it. Okay, let's go up here. Now with that, I'm going to reach right in here and use a firm pressure. And let's just cut in a little water line. You really get tough with it. Cut it right into the right into the fabric. Just really cut it. Mm. There. See there? Isn't that easy? You can put a little ripple here and there if you want it. That's sort of up to you. Now 
keep these water lines and ripples basically straight. If they're not, if they're not straight, your water will look like it's going to run right out of the, right out of your painting on the floor and, and get the floor wet. We don't want that to happen. Okay, I'm going right back to the one-inch brush into the dark color, very dark color. Okay, I kind of wish that I'd done just straight white on that. Love that burnt, burnt sienna color. Love it. Maybe just give it a little white. Okay. The other issue is when I do use that dark brown and I get my, you can't just rub it and make it go away. White will go away, but not with that brown on it. Pull the brush. Wait, what is this? painting on the floor and get the floor wet. We don't want that to happen. Okay, I'm going right back to the one inch brush into the dark color. Very dark color. Pull the brush. I'm making a tree. A lot of paint. Give it a wiggle. We're trying to we're trying to make a sharp chisel edge. See how sharp that brush is? Very sharp. Takes a lot of paint on the bristles to hold it together. Okay now then maybe there lives in our world right here a happy little evergreen tree and we start off by just making a line then just using the corner of the brush see there and you can do this with a two inch brush or or the fan brush fan brush makes nice delicate ones one inch brush anything anything there okay between each tree bring it back to a nice sharp chisel edge very sharp just the corner of the brush as you work down the tree, add more and more pressure. And you're using more of the brush. But the angle that you hold the brush is basically the same through the entire tree. It's just that you're adding more and more pressure so it pushes, bends the brush. Okay, I tell you what. I tell you what, let's have one more right there. Right there. You had two trees there. Sooner or later, you'd, you'd have a third one. You know how them little rascals are. You gotta watch them. There. Okay, now maybe under here, something lives. Little bushes and stuff live right out here. Just push them in. Just push. Push the brush upward. Now, one thing you wanna avoid don't let the brush slide. If the brush slides, it's Watch, if it slides, you're going to get that kind of effect. Don't let it slide. Push it, bend it. Okay, now, let's put a little bit of that down here. We'll have some reflections in this water. I like, I like reflections. Isn't that the nicest way you've ever seen to make reflections? There. Tell you what. We don't want this other side to get left out while I have the old brush dirty here. Let's go on the other side. I'll reload the brush the same way, bringing it to a nice sharp chisel edge. All right, let's go back up here. Maybe I have a big evergreen that lives right here. Just the corner of the brush, back and forth. I had a lady in class one time. She called these Z trees, like Zorro. And that's sort of a good analogy, sort of just back and forth, back and forth. Well, I taught, traveled and taught for many, many years and met some of the most fantastic people in the country. And I still correspond with a lot of them because you can't believe how some of the paintings people are doing now after taking a class and a couple of years of practice. It's just unreal. We have several people that have literally quit their job and they went into painting full time. And now they're happier. Painting makes you happy. Yeah, it doesn't make me happy. Don't think you can be sad and do this. Mm. Shoot, let's have another little bush that's right here. Like so. I've got too old and tired. I don't do much traveling and teaching anymore. We have a staff of teachers that travel and teach now. And they're fantastic. Same old color here. Same color. Just pop in some little things wherever you want them. If I'm not careful, I'm going to cover up the whole canvas. Okay. 
Decide where, where reflection and land meet here and grab it and pull straight down. It's important you pull straight down. You don't want your reflections to be all crookedy. Okay, and lightly go across. See? Over here, make the same decision. Where do you want this one to be? Right there. Right there. Right there. Pulling down. Anything you don't like, you just turn it into reflections. That easy. We don't make mistakes. Shoot, we have happy accidents. Now, I'm going to take a little bit of the dark. Mark sienna, put a little white into it, pull that paint out as flat as I can get it, and cut across, and once again we have that small little roll of paint. Okay, let's go right up here to this old evergreen tree. We'll just put the indication here and there, a little trunk in there. Like so. Same thing on the other side. Just wherever you think they should be. And you won't see the whole trunk. So just here and there. You can also just take and scrape through and make all kind of little bushes and sticks and twigs. And people will think you spent a lot of time, a lot of time putting them rascals in. And don't you tell them any different. That's our secret. All right. I'm going to take some yellow. I'm going to reach up here and grab a little bit of black. Black and Yellow make a beautiful, beautiful dark green. Pull that brush in one direction. Okay, now then. Let's just begin popping in some little highlights on these trees. Now think about the individual limbs that live in this tree. Don't just throw these on at random. I know sometimes it looks that way, but sort of think, think like a tree. There we go. Pick up a little bit of the yellow ochre. We can begin reflecting this right into the water. If your paint won't stick, if you have trouble making it stick, add the least little touch of paint thinner or a little bit of the liquid white. Either one. But work in layers, doing the, the bush or the tree that's the farthest away and coming forward. See how you can create the illusion of distance and depth? That easy. That easy. There's another one. Mm, there's a sparkler there. Pretty little devil. Like him. Like him. There. See these little these little things are real to me. Somebody wrote me a letter and said, guys, you refer to these things like they were real people. They have arms and legs and you know, you have to be a little weird to be a painter, so they're real to me. These are my friends. Let's go on the other side. Same thing. Same thing. Let's put some happy little bushes and trees. And... Oh, that's a nice one. And there's nothing wrong with making friends with nature. Nothing wrong with it. One day nature is going to take over again and you're going to need a friend. There. Let's get a touch of the bright red. Maybe. Oh, there's a pretty one. Look at that sun of a gun shine. Once again, though we're layering these, so it, it creates that illusion of distance. And we can reflect some of that right into the water. See how easy it is to make some of the most striking reflections. And if you're out selling paintings, boy, this will, this will sell your painting. People love these little reflections. Now pull straight down, very light. Very, very light. I mean, just ooh, one hair and some air. Take a little bit of Van Dyke Brown and I we need some land for all this to settle. I don't want to fall over in the water and make a big splash. Don't you treat a drown? I feel like we 
first of all, we did not highlight the evergreen trees. <clears throat> and already I'm missing that. Brown on the knife. Little dirt. Let that come up play there. And you just made friends with him. about the lay of the land and pull this just like just like it was real just give it a pull because water normally sits in a recessed area so you want this to be a have the Impression is lower. So I'll take some dark sand, a little Van Dyke brown, a little white, and let's come right in here and put a few little highlights on this. See that? Make it look like rocks and stones and all kinds of little things. That easy. But angles are very important. A little bit of the liquid white. And we drop in just some little water lines under here, just like we did in the background. Just cut them in. The other side. See there? And we'll take this old brush. I'm just going to put a few highlights. Oop. Old clock on the wall tells me it's about time to go for today. Couple things. One, he almost always brings down some plants on top of his land, but he is really pushing his time there. So let's see what's what here. And we we'll take this old brush. I'm just gonna put a few highlights. Old clock on the wall tells me it's about time to go for today. So as I finish up this tree here, I'd like to, I'd like to wish you happy painting. God bless. And I'll see you next time.
I don't think he even signed this one. Okay. Not my best work. This happen from time to time when I start to run out of <clears throat> usually yellow. When I run out of yellow. Mud mixing starts to happen. Oh! All the yellow ochre looks too similar to the green. Okay. Alright. I'm still going to sign it. Right here. There we go. And we've got ourselves a finished painting. See how that looks on your screen. Yeah, not too bad. I mean, it's just pretty similar, pretty typical Bob Ross picture with the sky with the clouds, mountain. Um, various foliage, evergreen trees. But yeah, here's our little white, uh, you know, sunshine shining through uh, along the water. So that is a finished painting. Thank you so much for checking in. If you watched any part of this episode tonight, thank you so much for stopping by. Um, yeah, it's a pretty good looking Bob Ross picture. Uh, but I'm excited. A friend of mine has asked me to uh, post more of the like sped up three minute versions of my um, of my videos. So I might start recording my videos and then just um, you know taking them times 12x or however fast and posting those because they're kind of cool to watch. Um, you get to see the whole thing really really fast. <laughs> huh. All right. Well, once again, thanks for stopping by. Have a wonderful Wednesday night and like Bob always says, 